So I've been thinking about this particular turning for a couple of weeks. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge. I've done all the steps that you're going to see, but I haven't put all of these together in one place. So that's the idea. And these have to be glued together. I've got a piece of sapile, yellow heart, roasted oak, yellow heart, and paduk. I'll need two boards like this. I'm just going to show you this one. And I'm not really going to show you all the gluing up on here because you've all seen glue up. I'll bring you back about the time we're putting clamps on it, but it's really going to be just setting these boards up like this and getting glue on it like that. I'll see you as soon as I get the clamps on. All right, I added a couple more clamps. I'm going to let this sit all day. I've got to go fix a leaky faucet. This is one of the boards I glued up yesterday. And what I'm going to do now is cut this into thin strips, three quarter inches wide. And I'm using my wedgie sled, which is set up at 30 degrees. That's the only rail I'll use to do this. In order to get all the strips at three quarters, I have the stop set up to do that. After each cut, I bump up against that stop, all the pieces will be a parallel three-quarter inch. I'm going to show you some of the cuts. They all look exactly the same. My very first cut is going to be cutting this off. That becomes a, a, a scrap piece, but you know I'm going to save that and make something out of it. So I'm going to show you some of these. I'll stop and show you how they go together, and then I'll finish cutting everything, and then we'll start gluing those pieces together. So all the pieces will look just like this. And they look like that when I cut them off. We'll be flipping them like so. This is how you make a chevron pattern if you're doing a feature ring. But we are not making a feature ring. But I'm using that method to create what we're going to have. So I'm going to cut all the pieces up. I'll come back and I'll show you how they get glued together. All right, let's get gluing. So here's what we got going on here. I need 10 sections just like that. They have to line up like this or it's not going to look right. So the plan is uh, to get glue on the joints, rub them together. It's end grain so I want to make sure it's on both sides and let it soak in. Get them lined up, let the glue tack up. Meanwhile I can be doing the same thing to another group of these and I'll show you how I'm going to clamp them up and why I can do this in a uh, series of three at a time. So let's just go ahead and get some glue on there and you'll see what we're doing. So I'm just going to put it on one side and then we'll rub them together like this. That was enough glue for each side. Okay, this is how I'll be clamping them. Got them in my vise. Make sure they don't slide like so. And tighten it up. See the glue coming up? They're not going to slide now. So I have three uh, vices similar to this, so I can get three going and probably change them out in 20 minutes or so.
I'll see you when it's time to do the next operation on this. This is when it's going to start getting pretty cool, but a little tricky. So I got all the pieces cut, and the next step is to cut an 18 degree angle from here up that direction. I'll need to do that to all the pieces, then I'll flip them and get 18 degrees off of this side. That will make an included angle of 36 degrees. Ten of these at 36 should add up to 360 and we should be able to get it glued together. And I hope we do because I only had enough yellow heart to make two extra pieces. I'm going to put it in this paper cutting sled that I made because you really would have a hard time holding that with a wedgie sled. This is adjustable to any angle I want to make and I check it out with my digital protractor. Let's go ahead and cut some of these and I'll come back and we'll flip it around and cut the other side. I just got through cutting the angle on one side of all the pieces. I need to put that same angle on this side. I've readjusted the sled. I'm going to go ahead and show you cutting a couple of these. It'll look exactly the same and the next time I see you we should be gluing this together. So I've got both angles on all of these pieces underneath here. These are the extras just in case it didn't go together. I could cut a special segment to go in there. Well guess what? I didn't need to do that. There it is. That's what it looks like. I didn't really want to show you that now, but I want to talk about something here that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I hear many, many times people say that if you're going to make a bottom out of segments, it's impossible, totally impossible, to get the segments to meet in the middle. Well, that met as tight as you could possibly get it. It's not impossible at all. I do it all the time. That's as sharp as can be right there. The trick, and it's not really a trick, is when you're cutting that and you're making that cut through there, you have to go really slow. 60 tooth carbide blade, real slow, that edge will stay together. So I may not keep it this way, I just wanted you to see that it can be done. I actually uh, drew this up with the idea of maybe having a quarter or three eighths a dowel in here out of this dark wood. So I don't know, what do you think? Would that look good? It looks good the way it is, but We'll see what happens when I get it glued together, whether we do that or not. Well, I've been looking forward to this step. It's time to glue it together. I did have some concerns about all these pieces that have to match at the joint. It's a little different than a normal segment. So I put some duct tape on each one of these, and I think it's going to prevent it from sliding. The only thing I have to do is line this up, I think. So I went ahead and flattened the ends of these because I knew that I was going to put a piece of dark wood in there and getting rid of those points is going to make it all go together easily and not catch. So I'm going to flip this over. We're going to get some glue in it because I can open that up and then uh, we'll get a clamp on it. So I'll go ahead and do that and uh, let it sit the rest of the day. And then we can get it mounted up and turned.
I've got it in the chuck now and I don't want to just make a flat plate out of this. So I'm going to use the bowl from a board method. I'm going to use my ring cutting fixture that I made and I do have a video on this and how I use it and how it's adjustable so I can make any angle I want. I'll put a link in the description for that. I also have these little uprights set up. I used this on another video. The first ring cut perfectly and it, and it worked great. The second ring I didn't have this set up right. It was the second time I used it and I missed one step. So I'm going to do it again. And I'll move the camera so you can watch all this happen. But the reason that I'm using this is there's 20 glue joints coming around here. And I've got these little gear looking things on here. If this is spinning and it falls off and hits the bed of the table, chances are those are going to break. If this was just a uh, bowl from a board that isn't glued together and it's round, I wouldn't worry about it. I've been very successful cutting it and if it reaches the table, which it doesn't always do, it's not a problem. It just kind of spins and I shut the lathe off and it's time to cut the next ring. I'm going to move the camera so you can watch this and we'll go ahead and see how everything works out. All right, here it goes. And I don't think I mentioned, but I'm cutting a 40 degree angle on this. It's uh, going to be more straight up and down. And the reason is, uh, I don't have a lot of room here and I don't want to cut into this. We're doing about 500 RPM. We're there. Okay, worked perfect. Well, I'm happy with my little ring catching device that I made. And the first one I stopped a little early because it had just cut through and it was hanging on by one piece so you didn't get to see it fall against these rails and just sit there. But you did on this ring and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm not cutting any more rings because, well, I don't want to get any closer to those points. I used my glue press to get this top ring on and that's because this has basically 10 segments. Cold jaws have 8 stops on it and I just felt I could get it closer doing this. So let's get this over onto the lathe and start turning it. I've got it in the lathe ready to turn it. Like so many of the glue ups there's much more work involved in cutting these pieces and gluing them back together than there is actual turning. This bottom is about 3 quarters thick. The walls are about a half. I can put a little bit of shape here, maybe dish out the bottom a little bit. I'm going to cut it and see how it looks hollowed out slightly. Got a freshly sharpened half inch bowl gouge, returning about 700 RPM I think. Okay, we got it. So I think I'll use the negative rake scraper to finish blending this top edge in.
All these glue joints coming together, this tool really does a good job. And we got it dished out. I think it looks good. I have to drill a hole in here now, like I talked about, and then I have to make a a little insert out of the uh, roasted oak. I've got it set up to try to blend this top rim into the bottom area, and this is doesn't have a lot of stock here. Maybe it has 7 16 maybe a little bit less. This is pretty much solid, and so is this. I've got a piece of melamine fastened to a chuck. It's in a ball bearing arbor that I have here. This will take the vibrations out of this piece, and it'll cut a lot better. So I've got my half inch bowl gouge. And I'm going to see if I can just nibble these things off without having them chip. Got the RPM up at around 850. Alright, I don't even have to sharpen this because I didn't use this side of the scraper, I used this side. So, we actually have a freshly sharpened one over there. I'm put a little light on that. It's off of the blade here. Alrighty, I think it's time to sand. Whew. Boy, that's the pile sure is lighting up. So I'm going to go ahead and sand the outside with the lathe running in reverse at about 400 RPM. I'm going to start with 100 grit, and I just got to be careful I don't knock these corners off. So what I'll end up doing is when I get up close to them, I'll use a piece of paper with the lathe running in reverse and do that. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the inside. I'll work my way up to 400 and we'll come back and get a finish on it. So I'll sand it to 400 and I decided to use the Minwax Polycrylic. But I'll start with the Minwax water-based sanding sealer. This doesn't look as good as some finishes when you put it on because it's a little milky. After about two coats it doesn't look that way. But I'll let you see this. Yeah, that looks alright. So oh, real easy to put on. All the coats go on like this, but once you get the polycrylic, then you start putting it on a little bit lighter. So I'll go ahead and do the back, get a couple coats of this on it, get the polycrylic on it, and then I'll come back and show you what we have. Okay, we're almost done, and it is looking pretty nice. I put two coats of Minwax water-based sanding sealer, three coats of Minwax polycrylic. I just went over it with the axe abrasive paste and my last step is using the polish restoring paste. I have something new here. Here's the axe polish restoring paste I usually use. I now have a can of this still called polish restoring paste but it's now double the carnauba wax. I have not used this. I just opened it. 
it is a little thicker feeling. I guess there's more carnauba wax in it. So we're going to get to see how this works at the same time. Oh yeah, that's that's a lot lot thicker. We're going to get some of this on here. And I like to let it sit for maybe five minutes. So I'm going to get this on, let it sit for five, ten minutes maybe, because I have something to do, and I'll come back and we'll buff it out and see if it looks even better than the other polishing wax. All right, I think that's sat long enough. I'm going to buff it out with a soft cloth. I'm going to be spinning about 600 RPM. I don't know if you can see it, but it really took on a really nice shine. Just like glass. I like that a lot. I was hoping to get a finish on this piece like that. And I don't even know if you got to see that, but I don't need that anymore. So that's that's how I put the tenon on with hot glue. So we're gonna take that off and then I'll have to finish the bottom. I'm just gonna drip some denatured alcohol around the hot glue. Now I'll put that on there and when I come back I'll show you we can just lift it off. All right, I just need to sand this a little bit and get a finish on it, and I'll see you when we're through with that. Well, here it is. It is all done. What do you think? I sure like it. It's a lot of fun to do. Here's the bottom. I think that looks pretty nice. Finished 10 inches in diameter. It's two and a quarter inches tall. The walls are about five sixteenths. I used Minwax water-based sanding sealer and Minwax polycrylic. Went over it with Axe abrasive paste, and then I tried this new polishing restoring paste that has double the carnauba wax. Let's see, I got a decent finish on there. What do you think of the rim up here with the little sculpted edges? Let me know. So, a lot of glue up, a lot of cutting, a lot of scraps. I ended up with, well, 20 pieces of these. It's like, well, do you toss those out or maybe you do this. You glue them together and you get another turning. So, I'll show this again in a future video. I've got a request to do something that has nothing to do with this piece, but I'll be able to use this piece to show my hot glued tenons, so be sure to watch for that. Anyways, I really had a lot of fun making this, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to let me know if you liked the video. A thumbs up would be great, but I also love reading your comments, and I will do my best to answer them all. A special thanks to all my subscribers, and if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I do all types of turnings, and feel free to let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.